on EA Sports. And the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the Jags and the Bengals on Thursday night primetime. With the Ohio River and the hills of Kentucky just to our right, we welcome you into Paul Brown Stadium in Cincinnati, Ohio. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Cincinnati Bengals. With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you talk about storylines in this one. I think it begins and ends with our two quarterbacks, certainly two of the best in the business. And nowadays, I don't think you can get by for long periods of time without a top-flight quarterback. The way the game is played, with all the responsibility he has and how the game flows through him, if he's not on the top of his game, your team's not going to benefit at all.22nd NFL season. Unbelievable. The great Tom Brady. If you just break it down in individual terms, he played really well last week. Zero interceptions, three touchdown passes. Not a whole lot more he could have done to win that game. But you know something that's funny when we talked to him, all he focused on were throws he missed, yeah. other opportunities that didn't get done. Good sign of a leader. Great sign of a leader because they didn't win, and that's all he cares about. The numbers a week ago for Cook. 23 carries, 99 yards, and a touchdown. And now that he's playing a Thursday night game short week, you know he spent a lot of time in the trainer's room in the cold tub trying to get his legs back for this game. They fake the handoff. Now Brady. This is the tight end fan. That catch good for five. It's third down. Charles, Thursday night game, I think a lot of teams probably say shrink the playbook somewhat. Is that correct? I think you're right about that because you just don't have the amount of time that you have in a normal week to put in a full playbook. So as you said, you shrink the playbook, pick out the plays that work best for you. And you know what else you're looking for? What's that? Who are the freshest guys coming off of the last game to play on a Thursday night? Guys have a little extra pep in their step. You go to them. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. That throw's not going to get him a whole lot, but that really didn't matter, did it? They got what they needed on that throw. Picked up the first down, and I'm going cliche here. Game of inches, partner. Absolutely. Well, and you talked to me a lot about opening drives, how key those are to set the tone. You kept the drive alive. Third down conversion here is big. First down, here's the run with Cook. Strong run, but they get to him just beyond the 40. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Well, this defense for the Jaguars, they were excellent a week ago in the victory over Arizona. It was a little bit of lightning talking with the defense coordinator about their performance last week because the feeling was that it was a good, solid performance. They did what they needed to do to get the job done to get the win, but definitely a few lapses that they're looking to correct. They'll run it. Here's Cook. And yeah, Cook was fighting for it, but I don't think he got there. Tough sledding. They lose a yard there on third. Just a simple run play there on third and one, but this D was up to the challenge and stopped them, bringing it up fourth down. On fourth down, A.J. Cole comes on to punt. Back deep, the dangerous Tyler Lockett. 
Yeah, yikes. Terrible kick headed straight for the sidelines. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. So here are the Jags now set to get their first drive. They'll be led by their fourth-year quarterback out of Oklahoma, Baker Mayfield. And they are in rhythm on offense because of him. I mean, right now, he's got everything going the way he wants to, finding the receivers the way he wants to, looking over defenses. No interceptions is the number I lock in on before a touchdown pass isn't so bad either. Yeah, what a game he had last week. A throw left side to start out. That's complete. A gain of six there on first. To throw again on second down. Mayfield he has got his man. It's Andrews. And he gets this one to midfield before he's let's brought go, down. Let's go, let's go. The numbers for Andrews last week. Six catches, 76 yards, and a touchdown. Having a nice season. Number eight in the league in receiving yards. And not just making his team happy, but anyone who's picked him in fantasy football. Pressure comes, and down goes Baker Mayfield. Calais Campbell fighting his way home for the sack. A few issues here on the offensive line, apparently. He got sacked five times last week. They got to him here in the first quarter. And I would think that running the ball would be paramount here because it's a different team they're facing, but they've watched the film as well. So they'll take many of those same principles and try and apply them in this game to see if they fix what was wrong with them in the last game. Second and 21, a lot of ground to cover. The former second round pick, this is Joe Mixon. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. To throw, Mayfield. And the catch is made here by Tyler Lockett. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. Working out of the gun, Mayfield returning right back to Lockett. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Counting down toward the midway point in quarter one. Looking to throw again on second down, Mayfield. And that's going to be incomplete. Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five. Mayfield with it once more. And yeah, this pass broken up. And some coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. And Lutz puts this one through. And the Jaguars grab a 3-0 lead. So he's been automatic to this point of the season, and he connects on the field goal there. And what a luxury it is to have a kicker you can depend upon, partner, because he hasn't missed all year long. Converts on that one as well. And kudos to you. You didn't jinx it. And this will be a touchback, so they'll bring it out to the 25. Cincinnati coming back onto the field here for their second drive. And they are losers of two straight coming into this Thursday night game. Is it more difficult, CD, when you take a losing streak into a quick turnaround game like this? It certainly is because you don't get time to work on the issues that you've had throughout the season that have caused you to have the record that you're having. You can't really get those set. So now you're trying to minimize those and maximize what you've been doing well. And I remember a game recently where one of the assistant coaches said to the head coach, forget our running back rotation. This guy has a hot hand, and they rode him to a victory. Those are things you have to look out for in games like this. Third down, Dalvin Cook. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. That gain of nine buys them a new set of downs. And that's why Dalvin Cook is the Minnesota Vikings feature back. You put the ball in his hands, good things happen. Second in the NFL last year in rushing with 1,557 yards, and that's now back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons with 30 combined total touchdowns. What a player is Dalvin Cook. Hey, 
Following the good run by Cook, here's another first and ten. To throw is Brady. He'll find Metcalf. He had a great move, but he'll still be stopped shy of midfield. A gain of six there on first. On second down now, it's Cook. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. Working from the gun, it's Brady. This one complete to me, Cole Hardman. Oh, he's got some breathing room. Touchdown, Bengals. Nicole Hardman, his second touchdown on the season. And the Bengals have taken the lead. But for McCole Hardman, I mean, he was the only guy with two of the top ten fastest runs in all of 2019. And he's showing that that was no fluke. He was moving there. And that's the kind of play where you have to kind of catch your breath afterwards and just give me a second here because when he shifted into high gear, he was an absolute blur out there. No substitute for speed. We talk about that all the time. The evidence was right there. Extra point by Sly is up and good. And that makes it a 7-3 lead. So that drives six plays, 75 yards. And it's finished off with a Cincinnati touchdown. Joey Sly now to kick off after the touchdown. Fielded just outside the goal line. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. So time to see Jacksonville again on offense for the second time here in this game. They come off a victory over the weekend, but now the quick turnaround here for this Thursday night game. How does that affect how teams like this approach these short turnarounds? Well, wins and losses always factor into, you know, how you're getting ready for the next game. But equally as important when you have the short turnaround, what is your injury situation? Are you losing key guys? And if so, how well have the backups prepared for this? Because you don't have much time to get them ready. They have to be ready before this week in order to play well in this game. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. Mayfield to throw it. And he's got his tight end. That's Andrews. And he is going to have a Jags first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. The drive stays intact with a pickup of 13. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. And now some motion before the snap. And this will be our first penalty of the night's proceedings. That's on the guard, Kevin Zeitler. First round pick back in 2012. A full start backs him up five. First and 15. And again, it's Mayfield. Oh, he'll let one go deep for Higgins. And this is dropped. Oh, it's incomplete. He had a big gainer in his sights, but he could not reel it in. T. Higgins was the intended target. And that'll bring up second down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He was looking for Jamison Crowder there. And that takes us from second to third down. Throwing Mayfield. It's brought in by Jamison Crowder. And he will have a Jaguars first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Boy, a nice play there as they wind up converting on third and 15. Had to put that ball in there with a little extra zip, and he put it right where it needed to be. Yeah, and that little extra pace that he had on the pass, that required a little extra concentration for him, didn't it? Ball can get on you pretty quick in that manner, and he handled it well and picked up the first down. So they'll come up in Bengals territory now with a first and 10 right at the 40. Throw right side pulled in by Higgins. And he's going to be out of bounds down around the 35-yard line. Going to the air again with Mayfield. 
Pressure comes and down goes Baker Mayfield. William Goldston breaking through to get him to the ground. It's a loss of seven. And that takes a start to have a good drive quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? Now, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. A long way to go here on third down for the eighth play of the drive. Mayfield now. Under pressure, and they got to him again. the football to begin the second quarter. Here's Britton Colquitt to punt this one away. Fair catch called for right around the 11-yard line. Just 34 yards on the punt there, no return. And the Bengals will have a first and 10 from deep in their own territory. Cincinnati's offense coming back here onto the field. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Did they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were competent enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. Now a quick throw as that's complete on the hit track. And he's able to get this one all the way past the 30. That one good for 20 on the catch and run. And he's top five in the league in terms of receiving yardage because of plays like that. What have you seen from him on film that you like so much? Well, I'll strip away everything else and get to what we call the moment of truth. When the ball's arriving and there's a defender there, he just comes down with the ball. He competes and takes it away. Great hands, great ability to finish the catch. On first down, it's Cook, and he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. Two yards the loss, second and 12. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. So the first down run lost a couple. Now they come up second and 12. Now Brady. That's to Dalvin Cook, his running back. It'll be a gain of six, and that's going to bring up a third down. Well, he was a busy man out of the backfield a week ago. They got the ball early and often. I have no doubt in my mind that he'll be a big part of the game plan here as well. The Bengals on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This will be third and five. From the gun, it's Brady. He's got his man, that's Hardman. And all the way in for a Cincinnati score. CD, we have seen some great runs the last few times we've been together, but I think we can at least put this one in our top five. That was a determined gallop there. Yeah, this is a guy who runs with such balance and control. I mean, he went through that early contact just like he was driving over a speed bump. He's able to continue his way downfield and wind up in the end zone. And you can see the distance traveled there after the initial contact and the next-gen stats. Now Joey Sly for the point after. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. Five plays there on that drive. And it ends with a Bengal score.
Joey Sly now to kick off after the touchdown. No return here for QT, so this will come out to the 25. As the offense comes out, we put our Madden spotlight on Baker Mayfield. And I guess the question, Charles, is what's the formula for keeping him better protected? Because as we see, the protection, it struggled. And normally what you get is renewed determination. When the, when the big guy gets hit, that usually sparks people. Hey, we can't let this happen anymore. They take it personally. He's not supposed to be on the ground. But that hasn't been the case so far in this game. So maybe they've got to figure out how do they get rid of the ball faster. To Pressure comes and down goes Baker Mayfield. William Goldston able to drop in that time for his second sack of the evening. A rough couple of weeks for the man under center. Five sacks last week, four now this week. Do you try to design some quicker developing plays if you're an offensive coordinator? I think you do that. I think you also change his launch point times in other words move your pocket to the right to the left roll him out bootleg it do some different things so they can't just rely on the fact that he's going to take three to five steps back in the pocket and line up and throw the football yeah the current formula is not working right now now this one to his tight end out on the right side and he'll get this one way up just shy of the 45 Give them 32 on the play. Obviously, they're not where they want to be right now on the scoreboard. Big plays like that, though, that'll trend them in the right direction. Yeah, a few more like that, they'll be right back in the game. And if they can continue to do that, maybe they'll inspire their defense as well to get a few stops. Looking for Crowder, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Deron Harmon. And he'll take it across midfield and down the 48-yard line. So this is something we didn't see at all from this offense in the victory last week. That's a turnover. They didn't have any, but giving the ball away here in the opening quarter. I love the surprise in your voice because it's exactly what you stated. Didn't see it last week, but it's a key to their win. And it'll be a key to this game as well, protecting the football. Didn't get it done there. So here are the Bengals set to take over. They lost two straight coming in, but good news for them right now. They've got the lead and the football. So after the INT, it's Brady. And the Jags get to him as down he goes. Well, that's what they have to do more of defensively, not just getting sacks. We have to keep getting in his face, not let him get his feet set and deliver. He's been carving them up previously. Yeah, already has a couple of touchdown passes. About time they put a few grass stains on that jersey. A nice pick up there, 19 yards. And they're set up better for third. That's a good bounce back play right there after taking a sack on first down. Didn't quite get it to the marker, but now they're in a much better spot for a third and short yardage call through the offensive coordinator. You like looking at that section a heck of a lot better than trying to figure out third and long. He's exceeded his receiving yards from a week ago, and we're still in the first half. It's a first down. Shotgun now for Brady. Locates Hardman for another catch. Second and two. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who could turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. On second down, Cook. And he'll be brought down at the 21 to shine the 20 in the red zone. Six yards the pick up, and that's a first down. On the carry, it's Cook. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Now Brady. Oh, he rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked up by Blesson Austin. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Well, certainly not his best throw that time and not a good time to make it, Charles, when they were a nickel with five defensive backs on the field. And that's exactly why you have those five DBs out there. You want extra speed on the field, guys who have ball skills and understand what the passing game can do and gives them a chance to react and make a play on the football, and they take one of those away. Following the interception, Mayfield. 
This one complete to the running back, Chase Edmonds. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it can turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. And a second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Well, to me, there was no question about the intent there, and I think he was a little fortunate that the penalty flag didn't come out for grounding. But he'll get away with it and get another shot on third down. Now Mayfield. Throw right side is complete to Andrews. He's tight in. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. 11 yards there for Jacksonville and a first down as well. They'll throw again. Here's Mayfield. Able to find Higgins. A good gain on first. Has him set up with second and just a couple of inches now from the 29. Fired that one in there. Able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes and they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger than maybe an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. And now we'll get a timeout. Looks like we've got a Jaguar in some discomfort down there on the field. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. Now left side on the swing pass. And he's down right around midfield after a gain of two, maybe three. That catch good for only a couple. Mayfield off the play fake. On the catch, it's Crowder. They'll look to make it three for three on third down conversions. They need a yard here. Now whistles here, and I believe one of the Jaguar linemen might have moved. Teron Armstead, Pro Bowl tackle, called for the penalty there. Well, that's a tough, costly penalty, because now it makes it third and six after the false start. Mayfield looks to throw. Left side complete to Lockett. And he is going to have a Jags first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. We've got a 14-3 ball game with two minutes left in the opening half. Coming up at the half, a reminder, we go back to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman. He'll have a look back at our first half, as well as a look ahead to what's coming up later this weekend. Now here's a throw that's complete, and he gets it down a yard or two shy of the 30 before he's out of bounds. Second and four. Mayfield with it once more. Pressure comes and down goes Baker Mayfield. William Goldston bringing the pressure yet again. That's his third sack here tonight. They'll go out to the flat for Edmonds. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough. And now fourth down. Colquitt on the kick as he sends it away. And the fair catch is taken at about the 13-yard line here. A special teams mistake there, no doubt. Just 26 yards officially on the punt. And the offense will come back out deep in their own territory. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. And he's taken down. Back at his own seven. Preston Smith able to record his fifth sack of the season. Just not much a quarterback can do there, CD. The pressure was in his face almost instantaneously. Led to a very quick sack. And this came from the edge. And those pass rushers, they have so many tricks of the trade to get around blockers. They have a lot of tools in their kit. This was pure speed and athleticism on this play, though. And they could barely get a glove on him before he got the quarterback on the ground. One more time, they'll keep it on the ground. Stays on his feet. And they'll hustle up to stop him well shy of the first, right around the 15. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds to go in the first half. 
And the punt team on now as this one's sent away. Oh, he shifts past him. A well-hit ball there. 50 yards on the punt, three on the return. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. And we'll see how they want to play this. Just a little over 20 seconds to go. This one caught by Crowder. The Jaguars now will use the last of their timeouts as it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the first half. Play action now. Here's Mayfield. And that's going to be caught. T. Higgins. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. So we've reached halftime here in the Queen City, and it's the Bengals leading this one. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, Charles, thanks very much. Welcome in, everybody, to our EA Sports Halftime Report. Let's take a look at what we've got on tap as we wrap up the first quarter of the NFL season. We'll start in the early window and begin up in Minneapolis, a tough one for the homestanding Vikings as they'll match up against the Cleveland Browns. Later in the afternoon, a lot of the country will be watching the game at Lambeau Field in Green Bay, where it'll be the Packers taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers. And finally, on Monday Night Football, a good one in the AFC West, the Raiders and Chargers live from SoFi Stadium. We continue on with the check of the next-gen stats in that first half for the Jags. And despite the fact that they're looking up at a double-digit deficit at halftime, they were able to move the football through the air in those first two quarters. Meanwhile, for the Bengals, they were even better throwing the football. Lots of open receivers to choose from, and you can bet that'll continue to be a focus in the second half. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. And they're still very much in this game, although they do trail. What's the game plan, Charles, for the second half? It might be a little counterintuitive because most people will think losing equals passing the ball more, but I'd establish the running game. They kind of went away from it in the first half. I think if they get back in balance, it'll help them when they put the ball back in the air. To throw once more on second and 10. Mayfield, and his throw is going to be incomplete. Tyler Lockett was the target there, and that'll make it third down. Throwing, Mayfield. Herring one out for Crowder. And this is incomplete. Oh, it looked like he had a pretty good line on that one. That would have been a big play, but he could not pull it in. Oh, it is the punt team now as this one sent away. It's just a 32-yard punt with no return. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. To throw is Brady. Over the middle, that's caught by Schwartz. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. A good pick up there, 22. So again from the 39, this time from the other side of the field. Here's first and 10. Working from the gun, it's Brady. Got an open man, it's Schwartz. A gain of six there on first. Working with a second and four. To throw, it's Brady. This one into the hands of Kittle, the tight end. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. A give. This is Cook. And not much. Maybe a yard down to the 23. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Now Brady, setting up the screen for Cook. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. 
Into the red zone, it's Brady. And that is caught. He's got it for a big touchdown. George Kittle with touchdown number eight on the year. And the Bengals add on to their lead. That drive that really increased their cushion felt very military to me. Very precise, methodical as one of the words you've taught me. And they just got it done. And slowly but surely now starting to pull away a little bit. Things looking good for them here in the third quarter. Not only pulling away, but you mentioned that slowly but surely. You also drain clock too with yeah. a drive like that. So you really give yourself an advantage. The extra point by Sly is up and good. And the lead is up to 18 now. Joey Sly now to kick off after the touchdown. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Jacksonville set to go again offensively. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Well, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. From the 29, Mayfield. He's got his man. It's Andrews. That'll put him at 77 yards receiving for the ball game. It's a first down. From the gun to give to Mixon. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. Now it's second and nine. Now the first carry for Chase Edmonds. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. They'll get this to his running back, Edmonds. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time, they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? The throw down the field caught by his running back. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. 28 yards the game there on the catch and run. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and 10. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. This one caught by his tight end, Andrews. He's down inside the 10 to the 8, and it comes on a gain of 8. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Throwing again on second down. Mayfield. And he's going to go down. Sacked back at the 13-yard line. Well, the number one mission of any offensive line, you got to protect that quarterback, keep him safe back there. This time, the rush got to him in a hurry. And what a great call defensively there because they decided to bring pressure off the corner. And a lot of times, those big linemen, they can't account for the speed of a defensive back. And that time, he made a beeline right for the quarterback and got it. The cat blitz, tough to defend. On third down, Mayfield. And that is caught, but he will come down out of bounds, says the side judge, incomplete. And that'll bring up fourth down as his Cincy defense stands up on third. The kick by Lutz is good, and that'll get the deficit down to 15. So that may be not exactly what they were hoping for, but it does get them back within a couple of scores. And at this point in the third quarter, you don't have much margin for error, and that means you can't have drives that end with nothing. Whether it's a punt, a turnover, a turnover on downs, those have to go away. You have to end with a kick, either a field goal or an extra point after a touchdown. The Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you score points, 
It's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. A give to Cook out of the gun. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. 52 yards rushing for him in the ball game now on 14 carries. So in Jacksonville territory now. Here's a first and 10 at the 45-yard line. They run. Cook. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Play action. Now it's Brady. The tight end Kittle has it on the left side. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. Shotgun now for Brady. An unlucky number here. A loss of 13 on the play. And it'll make this a second and long. Now Brady. Completes it to the tight end, Kittle. Well, why not get him 10 back as that sets him up for third down? Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing and communicating. There he is, and he passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. A big play there as they get the conversion on third and 13. They run with Cook. He's been busy tonight. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. A gain of three, second down. Again, it's Cook. And he'll take this into the end zone from Bengal TV. Delvin Cook, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Bengals are able to grow their lead. So it was the passing game that got him down here, but closer to the goal line, it's the running game that gets him home. Certainly appears that they lulled the defense into thinking that the passing game was going to be it the entire drive. Nice change up there going to the running game to get him over the goal line. Sly on for the extra point. He's got it, and the lead swells. It's 28 to 6. That time, a nine play drive, and it's capped off by the touchdown run coming from Dalvin Cook. Joey Sly now to kick off after the touchdown. No return here for QT, so this will come out to the 25. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize, like going to the county fair. You don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Six yards the pick up, and that's a first down. Mayfield to throw it. Able to find Higgins. And he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. One quarter remains here in this Thursday night matchup. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Cincinnati. A lot of happy faces in the crowd at this point as their guys have a big lead here to start quarter number four. On first and ten, Mayfield. Throw right side is complete to Andrews, his tight end. No gain there on the completion, second and ten. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. Throw right side pulled in by Higgins. 
And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. Five yards, now it's third and five. Mayfield now. And that nearly intercepted. Well, for a guy known for his hands defensively, that's a ball he probably thinks he should have come up with. But instead, it's fourth down. Desperation time. Mayfield on fourth down. And this is dropped. Oh, it's incomplete. He had a big gainer in his sights, but he could not reel it in. Boy, it looked like he had it and dropped it. And the Bengals will get the football back. The Bengals drive about to get going. Been a very strong performance for them, really, on both sides of the football. The turnover on down's the most recent example, and now, obviously, they're in a great spot here. Hey, if you're over on the bench right now, you're shaking hands with your teammate, you're hugging him, give him a little dap. Been a big, big performance for them. Now you just don't get careless, take care of the ball on the way out. And he'll push this forward only to about the 42-yard line. They follow up the gain of two with a gain of one that time. And the Bengals on third down. They've been very good, five for seven thus far. This is third and seven. Brady. He'll find Schwartz complete right side. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. He'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. Jacksonville back on offense and ready to take over. Even though they were able to force the punt defensively, still a big hole to climb out of, especially at this late stage of the contest. First down, Mayfield. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Andrews. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. A first down throw for Mayfield. Here's Higgins out on the right side. That catch good for only a couple. Second down and eight. Now whistles here. And I believe one of the Jaguar linemen might have moved. Elton Jenkins, the pro bowler, flag there. And that false start penalty is certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. Mayfield. On the catch, it's Crowder. Call it a pickup of seven, and they're going to face a third down. Now Mayfield. Toward the sideline. Did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got them both down, says the side judge. And that's good enough for a first down. That one good for 24 yards. Mayfield now looking to throw on first down. This complete to lock it. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. That's taken in by Higgins. Oh, he put it on the carpet, a fumble, and the Bengals grab it. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Oh, you've had to put up with me in this booth. I'm going to try and be simple this time and succinct. It simply has not been their night. No, I think that fumble's kind of indicative of how this whole evening's gone, isn't it? Without a doubt. I mean, they've, they've tried, <laughs> but nothing has ever really taken throughout the game. That's why they're down so big. They start the drive with Cook. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. They run it again with Cook. They had a very short pickup there across the 15 to the 16. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. Throwing is Brady on third down. In trouble here, and down he goes. Back at the eight-yard line. Jason Pierre-Paul 
coming in to drop it for a loss of eight. And it also brings up fourth. Here's A.J. Cole now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Now a fair catch taken, maybe a yard or two shy of midfield. 36 yards on the punt with no return. Now the Jags will have great field position to start this drive as they take over on the short side of the field. Heading back out, Baker Mayfield as we call up our player's spotlight. He's been pretty good when he's had time. The issue is, as we see here, a lot of times he hasn't had the time. And a lot of that in getting past it is attitude. Well, how is he projecting? Is he showing that the team's, the other team is getting to him? Is he showing his guys up front that he's upset, that he's angry? Or is he still encouraging? Because those guys, they've got to find a way to pick it up. And it always happens a little bit better if they felt their quarterback's on their side. So far, five sacks against him. The throw here to Andrews, the tight end. And he's going to get this down near the 30-yard line. With that catch, he goes over 100 yards receiving on the night. So first and 10 now from the 30. From the gun, Mayfield. He'll swing that out to Edmonds. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. Three yards the gain there, second down. Throwing, Mayfield. It's caught, lock it. And out of bounds right around the 20. A nickel look now for the Bengals as they try to stop him here on third down. Try to pick it up on the ground with Edmonds. And he gets the first down yardage before he's brought down just outside the 10 at the 11. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? That looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you should have a few men in the box there. And a dangerous throw there, incomplete. He threw that into coverage. It was nearly intercepted. That is caught at the seven-yard line. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Here's Mayfield. The quick slant caught. Touchdown! Max Williams, his first touchdown on the year. And the Jaguars are finally into the end zone here in this fourth quarter. So a little bit of a letdown there defensively. I mean, look, you're still two scores to the good, CD, but things may be a little more uncomfortable than they had hoped. Yeah, if you'd kept them out of the end zone there, this game's over. You've locked the door on them. Instead, it's still open a little bit, and they've got a puncher's chance. So up comes Mayfield as his guys will go for two. Mayfield going to try to throw for the two. And this is going to be caught, but they'll say out of bounds. So it's incomplete. I don't know about you, but I can't wait for a few years of two-point tries and see what the data tells us. Because a lot of teams want to throw the ball in this situation, this time unsuccessfully. I just wonder if maybe running the ball might be the way to go. With it moved up from the three to the two, you would think maybe a few more attempts at running. I, I think stats over time may bear out that running the ball will at least be the equal of throwing it in that situation. The Bengals getting set to go. If they can score here, they have a chance to make this a three-possession game and all but put things to bed. They'll run on first down. Cook. And he's going to get this inside the 30. 82 yards on the ground for him now as he's gotten better, really, as the night's going on. And carries like that, that's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. It was Jason Pierre-Paul who was able to get him down. On second down, 
It's Cook. And a nice pick up there as he'll get about nine, and that will lead us to a stoppage here at the two-minute warning. Now this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he takes it down to the 13 and picks up the first. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Handoff comes to Cook, and he'll be taken down here at about the 11. Whistles now in a timeout. So defensively, they burn it here with 151 left. The last run got a couple. here, second and eight. From the gun, it's a give to Cook. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. And the Jags have five in the secondary here on third down. Cook. And he'll be tackled right on the 10, well short of the first down. And now we'll get a timeout. Looks like we've got a Jaguar in some discomfort down there on the field. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. And his kick is good. And that will extend their lead even further. Well, he was a spectator for much of this game. This is his first field goal opportunity of the entire contest, but he's able to connect. Yeah, he had a pretty good seat to this one, didn't he? But let's face it, all kickers that you and I know, they want to contribute. They want their opportunity, and he sees his. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. Here comes the Jaguars' offense as they get set to go again. Let's just be frank. They're playing for pride at this point. <laughs> that's, that's all that's left because victory, not a chance now. And I can't wait to see how they actually go about doing it because there are a lot of people watching the body language of the guys on the field now. And if they call plays they want executed, they need to do that and do it really well. Otherwise, there could be repercussions. We'll see how they handle the waning moments of this one. To throw on second and 10, Mayfield. Connecting with Andrews. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. His big game continues. Ten catches now and another first down. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. Chewing up big yardage, another nice game there. This one goes for 20. A bit of a catch for him to remember. That's number 400 for his NFL career. Not a bad number at all. Mayfield on first down. Toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. Second and 10. And again, it's Mayfield. That's going to go down as a loss of five, and it brings up third down. Now they got to get to the line quickly. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that will be incomplete. Oh, he left that in a bad spot, but fortunately it's just an incompletion and not picked to bring up fourth down. Now on fourth down here, that pass knocked away and incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining, and the Bengals are going to get it back in terrific field position. So this one in the win column now for the Cincinnati Bengals. And this coaching staff, CD, I think you'd agree, pleased with this overall effort. Oh, I think they're more than pleased, right? They got to look at each other like, wow, we just pulled this one off in a big way. Great job of motivating, even better job of game planning. They were facing a top 10 defense, so they had to make sure that everything was buttoned down and they had it ready to go, and their guys executed. Yeah, they were concerned not only about moving the ball through the air, but also on the ground but both really started to come in sync. So for the Bengals, it'll be a 500 start as the win gets them back to two and two. And they'll get a few extra days to savor this one before they take on the Green Bay Packers. 
Meanwhile, for Jacksonville, they also will exit this one at 2-2. Two and two. And they'll be at home next week for a date with the Tennessee Titans.